You can see my screen, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, about 21 on the Zoom call so far. That's good. 22. I think we have Professor Pereira, Professor Sanjeev Pereira on Zoom as well right now. I saw his name. Yeah. Yeah, he's there. Uh, let me know when you're ready to start. I am ready. Shall we start, Rishan, or shall we wait for... We, we can't hear you. You are on mute. <clears throat> yeah, I think we can start. We have 25 people and we are kind of, you know, past five minutes. So I think that will be good. Okay. Columbia University Faculty of Science Alumni Association, CAFSA, proudly presents a distinguished speaker series to uplift the knowledge of aspiring students and budding scientists in the Faculty of Science at the University of Colombo and Sri Lanka as well. In this series of lectures, Kafsa features accomplished scientists and key opinion leaders in different science streams to present the advancement in their field of expertise. This seminar series is a collaborative effort between Kafsa and the Columbia University Faculty of Science. Welcome to the Distinguished Speaker Series of Kafsa.
I am on the right track. Hello, everyone. So, uh, uh, welcome to the uh, Vajira's version of Kafsa's Distinguished Speaker Series, uh, which is on building a career in information technology. Uh, I would like to welcome you all for this iteration. So, he's a director in service and delivery in global applications of Aptop. Apotex Pharmaceuticals in Canada. So let now let me give you a brief introduction of uh, the pro, today's proceedings. The, uh, after the talk, uh, we have a Q and A session for fifteen minutes. Uh, during the talk as well, you can type your questions to the Zoom chat or the live YouTube live streaming comment section. You don't need to wait till the end to share your question. Uh, when you share your question, I will be uh, happy to ask them from Vajira himself. So before we go forward, let me give you a brief introduction of Vajira. Now, so Vajira basically, rather than reiterating what is available to everyone through professional social media and the current slide, I would say something else. So when Vajira was going to deliver a, a speech, I talked to Binod, who is the Senior Vice President of Ultragen YX Pharmaceuticals, said that he is an exceptional talent with an entrepreneurial mindset who broke the status quo of the traditional Faculty of Science graduate. Then, furthermore, Dr. Keith Premadasa, who is the guru and the grandmaster of career development, in his social media status have stated that Vajira has worked with him in his in organizing the first ever career fair in University of Colombo and was offered jobs by 23 out of 24 companies who participated in that job fair. Further, he goes on to say that he's a brilliant young man. Maybe not as young as myself. However, we have quite a distinguished distinguished speaker to extend us the pleasure of his company. Over, over to you, Vajira. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Niranjaka, for that introduction. And uh, thank you very much to Kafsa for inviting me to share my thoughts uh, in, in this speaker series. So let me get my slides up. You know, see my slides. Can you see my slides? Yeah, yes. it's not in the presentation mode. Yep. Okay. So today uh, I will be basing my speech basically on my personal experiences as well as based on what I observe as a IT practitioner in North America. And I and as the title says, I'll be talking about building a career in IT, but you will very quickly see that whatever I'm talking about will apply to uh, building a career in general. So with that, uh, let's look at the agenda for today. So first of all, what I would like to do is talk about the IT landscape and the different career paths available to uh, an aspiring entrant to the industry. Second, I would like to talk about what it takes to enter the industry, what it takes for you to grow and develop in the industry. Another aspect I would like to cover is what organizations look for in employees, what organizations value in employees. After that, I'll, I'll speak about a little bit of my own lessons learned and some of my thoughts about building a career. I'll talk about a few topics related to that. And uh, we'll conclude the discussion with ample room for uh, ample time for a Q and A, like uh, Niranjaka mentioned. So, if you look at the IT landscape today, you I think all of us understand it's a it can be very quickly uh, uh, equated to a complex ecosystem because it contains so many different domains which are interconnected. And like any other ecosystem, it keeps evolving and you know it evolves quite a bit. So adding new branches, 
extending the existing branches, etc. So, so if you are interested in building a career in IT, I think you need to understand what are these different domains and how they interconnect and how they uh, uh, how they will allow you to grow. At the same time, they will indicate to you the opportunities that are available in IT as a general industry as well as the kind of challenges you might feel. So here are a, a, a few examples. This is not by any means to say this is the large part of the career paths available, but this is a small part of the different career paths available to uh, someone who's interested in joining the IT industry. So the common ones that are very familiar for everyone is like a software developer or engineer, somebody who codes, develops solutions, supports them, maintains them. A network administrator or a network engineer is a career path where the in ever increasing networks that are required by organizations to function today. How do you set up? How do you set up these networks, computer networks, and how do you make sure they are supported, they are secured, so that uh, 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 organizations can operate? And as you know, there are many companies which operate over hundreds of, uh, maybe over hundred countries, maybe hundreds and maybe even thousands of locations, all of these things have to be maintained, supported by different networks. So it gives you a, a, a career path for someone who is interested in building on that. Other areas which are like very common that you will see are uh, systems administration, database administration, cybersecurity. So not necessarily cybersecurity, security itself is a career path that is becoming very important. As you all know, a lot of companies are faced with ransomware and security, cybersecurity threats all the time. And that has made this one of the highest risks for companies, for organizations, not necessarily companies, not necessarily for for-profit companies, but even for charity organizations, hospitals, any organization, security is a threat. So, so they are making significant resource commitments and efforts to strengthen their defenses against these threats. So that creates, that allows us to build a career in the security as it is a growing and expanding field. Other areas are like business intelligence analyst or a business intelligence manager. What is the difference between a traditional analyst or a business intelligence analyst? It is basically a business intelligence analyst will work with particularly reporting tools and visualization tools, which will allow uh, uh, practitioners of this uh, path to work with the business to make sure that they have all the information necessary for them to make the business decisions. So it's a slightly different than a general analyst, but focused on reporting and visualization tools. Data science. As you know, I'm sure it, it is always in the news. It, people talk about it, data science. So the, increasingly, companies are becoming aware of the value of the data they have. The data they have at the same time, there's a lot of data now available that the companies can buy from different companies, market research companies, survey companies, and hyperscalers, companies like Google, Facebook. Everybody has data information that that can be used by companies to offer better services, more targeted services and products to their customer base. So to get to, to, to get the best benefit of this available data, uh, data science is evolving as a very vital and a important discipline. So a lot of companies, particularly the big companies are uh, 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 creating career paths for people to straight join from universities and grow learning the business while improving their technical skills. Another area is cloud, cloud computing. Yeah, with, the, uh, with the expansion of cloud computing, cloud architects, cloud specialist type of career paths are exploding. Project management. Project management, uh, again, is a discipline which goes across many disciplines like engineering or business development, all of those uh, uh, disciplines also have project management, but there is a slight different flavor in IT if you are an IT project manager, but that provides, uh, uh, again, a full career path. 
Other areas like DevOps engineer, machine learning engineer, these are all career paths available to us. IT consultancy, what is IT consultancy? That is basically becoming a consultant, uh, uh, providing guidance, advice to organizations to achieve their desired goals using information technology. So it's very wide. You can, the, the, there are a lot of opportunities with consulting companies, as well as there are plenty of uh, uh, opportunities for you to go even on your own, become an IT consultant. Robotic process automation is another one. So like I said, this is only a small sample of career paths available. And as you all know, IT is expanding all the time, adding new career paths to us. I'm sure all of us have heard about generative AI, AI particularly, and uh, uh, this, while there are concerns that it will impact a lot of existing jobs, existing careers, it will, it will also open new career paths for us. And particularly if you are in the industry already, if you are in IT, you, do, you are at advantage to look at what are those new career paths that are getting open due to generative AI and AI in general. Other areas like quantum computing specifically, yes, it's expanding. There's a lot of research being done. A lot of money is being spent, although it's not in mainstream media and it's not widely used, but companies are making the investments on quantum computing as well. Other areas like robotics, where you have a cross-discipline work between engineering and IT, where they work together to make sure that industry expands. So, so there are variety of career paths that are open within IT. So uh, uh, looking at how to enter the industry, how do you enter the industry? So I would look at it from three angles. One is obviously gaining and uh, making sure that you have the right academic qualifications getting a degree from a university like University of Colombo or University of Moratua or any other university. So a, a degree or a professional certification. For whatever reason, if you are not in a computer science program in the university of your choice, uh, uh, you still have the opportunity to follow your, uh, uh, follow if, if, you will not, if you want to get into IT, you have the option of following a professional certification outside of the university and making sure you have that entry qualification, entry requirement. The second area is real world application. Now, how do you get experience? How do you get this real world application before you even get into a job? So that is where I think internships internships are very important. So while you are in the university, you can apply and you can get an internship. Or if you are not able to do that, if you do not have a company that supports that, you can start your own uh, kind of personal projects where you can use the skills that you are acquiring wherever you are learning and show that you have been using it. Just the companies, organizations are looking at do you have real world experience? You are all you only have academic qualification. So, to make sure that you have the second aspect of your uh, entry criteria, make sure you have something like that. If you do not have an internship opportunity, look at joining some open source communities and get into their working groups. All these open source committees, uh, open source communities have working groups. They, ha they want people to work with them to improve their offerings, work on the uh, uh, next generation, next iteration of their platform or the product, get into those things and then make sure you, you have that as uh, uh, experience in your resume when you apply. Then the third thing is soft skills. Just like the technical skills, the academics qualification is important. Soft skills are very important as well. Organizations want people who can do effective communication. They want you to be problem solvers. And definitely companies are looking for people who can work collaborative. So whatever you can show in your resume, whatever you can show in your discussions with the organization, they will be looking for these aspects, whether you are a collaborator, whether you can collaborate to work with others. And customer focus. Uh, gone are the days where customers, customer focus was required only in sales and marketing jobs. Everybody needs to look at their job, their role, and understand who your customer is. 
your customer might not be external, your customer might be internal, but still for all, you need to understand why you are doing something, what is your role and what who are the customers for your role. So it is very important. So showing a focus, showing an understanding that we are there, our roles are there to serve a purpose, serve a customer is very important. So companies, are organi organizations are looking for that. Okay, once you're in the industry, uh, uh, how, how do you grow and develop? So one obvious way you have one thing, or one thing obvious I would say is making sure you upskill. How can you upskill? You can become a specialist, you can build specialization on a specific technology or a domain. Like I said, security. You can you probably join as a junior security analyst or you will join to handle a, a security software to the IT. You will join the industry to do some a job like that. But you have ample opportunity to learn more and more about security, security principles, security architecture, and then even up to the level of coming up and managing security policies for companies, organizations, etc. So uh, that 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 option is there for you to become a domain specialist. The second option is to build skills across domains. Say, if you are a security analyst, if you are a security, uh, if is your initial domain that you start working on, you can look at maybe building your skills across maybe consulting, maybe project management, something like that. And if you started off as a, a software developer. Again, you can look at uh, in, improving, expanding your skills into other domains which are related or not related. At, at, seemingly, it might not be related at the beginning, but you will see, you will be able to draw the uh, 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 interactions and you will be able to derive the value of having multiple domains, skills across multiple domains. The third area is work on explore and uh, uh, work on develop your skills in emerging technologies like AI, data science, machine learning, robotics, robotic process automations. So these are the, the, the this is something how you have to keep. This is one way you can increase or upskill yourself. Another thing is actively seeking different uh, uh, or diverse projects and assignments. This is not only in selecting a job, but once you are in a job, you make sure that you do ask for, for different types of projects, different types of assignments. The next point is about, uh, okay, another way of growing is uh, you transition from being an individual technical contributor to be, to be a manager. So this is very true in traditional and not, not traditional, even today. A lot of hierarchical organizations driven by structure. Uh, a natural way to grow is to become a people leader. If you are a software developer, you become a team lead. Once you are a team lead, you will become a manager. Then you probably will become the director of software development. So that is a that is a career path, how you can grow. That's uh, something obviously available. The next one I talk about is entrepreneurship. Now, uh, uh, this is where uh, you cannot... Uh, you can identify unmet needs and wants in the market and uh, see how you can maybe build a business, build a solution that you can uh, 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 mark. And this is something that you can start easily while you're in the university. You can work with a couple of like-minded students, uh, look at what are those options that you can work and then you can work while you're in the university, while you're studying. At the same time, once you go and maybe start your own different jobs, careers, you can still do it probably part-time. So that, that's another option that you can grow yourself. Another thing I want to highlight here is the glo global job market and remote work opportunities. These, these two aspects are very, very relevant to IT. And as you have known, Unlike any other industry, sorry, unlike many other industries, IT is definitely a global job, job market. If you have the skills, your skills are very transferable across countries, across regions, and it is a very marketable and easily transferable skill in different places. So that, that gives you an opportunity. The other thing is the 
ability to do remote work. Certain jobs cannot be done remote. And definitely with the COVID pandemic, uh, we showed that we, a lot of companies, a lot of organizations can work remotely and remote work and the efficiency of that is established. I know these days now a lot of companies, organizations are coming, asking people to come back to office, but still for all remote work opportunities are there and they are only going to increase uh, as companies, organizations see the value of it. So these are some of the uh, uh, thoughts that I have on that. So what do organizations look for in employees? Typically, what they look for is they look for uh, employees who kind of embody their own core values. If a company is entrepreneurial in nature, they are looking for employees. They are looking for employees also who show that kind of initiative, entrepreneurial spirit. If you join a company which is uh, very heavy regulated, want uh, uh, people who follow st strict rules, guidelines, processes, who are strong on process, that's the kind of people they want. So how does this relate to us? Is we must be always sure when you're applying for IT jobs or when you want to start IT career, obviously your technical skills are important, but the companies, the organizations are looking beyond that to see whether their values and your values align, right? And uh, uh, the importance of this is when you are applying for a company, make sure you do a little bit of research about the company, what are those driving values for that company and make, make sure that your resume is aligned and then show the alignment between you and the organization in your discussion as well as in your resume. And in, another thing I want to highlight here is Make sure that you have a, a, a learning plan. You yourself develop a personal learning plan that includes both technical and soft skills. So I mentioned that an obvious part to grow was to become a people leader, a manager. So here I want to make a slight distinction between being a manager and a leader. What is a leader? So particularly in IT, if you do not want to be, or if you do not like to be a people leader, you still people leader or manager, you still have the opportunity to be a leader. You know, areas like uh, uh, becoming an architect, a designer of solutions, designer of, uh, 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 if you're a good problem solver, if you are uh, somebody who has that kind of skill, you can still become a leader, but not necessarily a manager. Right. So IT offers that option, that ability compared to some other industries where you are kind of mandated that you, if you want to grow up in the organization, you have to become a people leader or a manager. But in IT, you have this option of uh, uh, becoming a leader without having people report to you. So in that sense, what are companies looking at? Companies are looking at how do you improve expand your influence? How do you expand your output? So remember, particularly companies, private companies, for-profit companies are looking for, and they will remunerate, they will compensate you based on the output you produce. So the way you can produce or increase your output is either you yourself have to produce more in terms of either the amount of work or the quality of work, or you need to do that by working with a group of people and expanding and making their contributions higher. So end of the day, you can still become a leader without having people leader, people leader or managerial responsibilities. And again, I wanted to say this is, uh, 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 and what this requires to become that leader is uh, not only technical skills, technical skills are mandatory. That is like the base that you need to have, that is given. If you are in the IT industry, if you are in a particular domain, you need to know what you, are supposed to know. But beyond that, other skills like communication, decision making, conflict resolution, these are skills that you need to build as you uh, as you get ready for a, a job, a career, as well as once you start. Actually, you get a lot more opportunities once you go into a company. But if you're conscious of these things, you can build these skills when you are in the industry. 
other things the companies will value is establishing a positive culture. So this doesn't, this is not saying like that you need to become a senior leader to establish a culture. For an organization, you probably want to be a senior lead. You need to be a senior leader to do that. But in your own small teams, if you start and if there are four developers, then you are, if you're one of the developers, and if the organization sees that everybody who works around you seems happy, they are producing more, and you, you help others to do their best, achieve their best, they know you are a leader. So that's the kind of... Uh, leadership qualities that the companies, organizations are looking for. Okay, with that, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about my, some of the, I mean, based on my personal learnings, having worked in different places, different countries and different industries, and some of my thoughts about building a career. So I wanted to, uh, uh, kind of uh, talk about a few topics under this uh, heading. And one thing is self-awareness. So what, what do I mean by self-awareness? I'm talking about two sides to it. One, one is that you have to be very honest about understanding and accepting your strengths, weaknesses, and interests. You have to be honest. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And what are your interests? And the second part is that we need to understand that we are evolving. And our interests, our strengths as well, strengths and weaknesses as well will evolve over time. Particularly your interests will change based on the stage of your life, based on other fact, external factors. Uh, and then if you're aware of this, it will help you make the right career choices. So self-awareness is very, very important as you uh, 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 build your career. The next point I wanted to say was the societal changes and the impact that's going to have on your career. So you need to understand the, uh, the larger societal shifts that are happening and we need to adapt to them, right? And uh, uh, again, things like AI, people always talk about how it's going to impact. So how, how AI is going to impact is different based on the career you have, where you are working today. But it is important for us to know how it's going to impact your uh, 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 career and make the adjustments that you need to. The next point I wanted to talk, in, talk about was uh, uh, having a long-term career vision. This I kind of equate to kind of having a lighthouse, right? A lighthouse is always there to guide you. Not necessarily you're going, going straight at the lighthouse, but a lighthouse will give you the direction. It will give you, it will tell you whether you are heading in the right direction or where you're going away from it or you're going, be, going in the wrong direction. So basically, to make sure you are headed in the right direction, you need to have a long-term uh, vision. So how does this help? This helps and this helps to make sure that any assignment that you take, any job you take is driving you towards that long-term vision that you have. And you have to always look at that. So when you when you get a new assignment, when you get a new job, always not only look at the short-term benefits, but make sure whether it is driving towards where you want to go. And make sure you have milestones. Milestones are important so that you have some things to compare against and make sure that you are heading in the right direction in the time frame that you want. The third thing is when you try to manage your career over a long period of time, you are going to face challenges. Everyone's going to face challenges. And at that time, don't be shy. Seek advice. Seek advice from your mentors, from colleagues, from your lecturers, from your teachers, people who you trust go to them where you have a safe space, speaks to them, and then make sure that you get the right guidance and uh, th that is needed. Uh, the next one is sh setting short-term goals. It's, it's Im very important to have a long-term goal, but at the same time, you will not be achieving long-term goals if you do not have short-term goals, which are quite specific with measurable targets and action plans to achieve them. 
just having a vision, a dream is not enough. You need to make sure you have short-term plans and you need to execute on that. If you do not, you do not, things do not work out for themselves. What I'm trying to say is while you see the long-term, you need to make sure you work on the short-term as well. So let's take an example here. So if your long-term goal is to become, to have your own IT company, a startup, you start, you want to start a company and that's your long-term goal. Very well. And then you have a timeline, say that I want to, maybe when you get out of the university, probably you don't have the experience required and probably you don't have the capital. Or you don't know how to raise the capital needed to start the business. So you give yourself five years as a long-term strategy, long-term goal to have your own company in five years, six years, whatever. So then you need to have short-term goals. So then for the first five years, what do you need to do? You need to have short-term goals for that. For the first two years, maybe you will join a company. You will join probably a small company which will allow you to work on different areas, right? And then uh, uh, maybe build, build some, maybe save some money, build some contacts where you learn how to get funding for a company and give yourself that five year time frame to do that. So how the long-term goal helps you is that if that is your target, if you want to start your own company in five years, you probably won't join one of these big companies which give you the highest salary and maybe opportunities to work in North America or Europe. You will probably not look at that. You probably will join a smaller company because smaller companies tend to give you more exposure more wider exposure, because if you go to a bigger company, you're going to work in a smaller, more narrower area generally, right? So that's how uh, 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 your long-term vision, long-term career goals will drive you to making the right short-term goals. But within the short-term goals, you need to make sure you work on them, deliver them so that you, you, you ultimately get to where you want to. Lifelong learning. So, I mean... I do not need to belabor the point. You know how rapidly technology advancements are happening these days and all innovation cycles are getting shorter and shorter. You talk about technology obsolescence. New technologies come in two years. They, they seem old. I work sometimes with my infrastructure colleagues. They come up with new, new ways to say, do a backup. After two years, the company is gone. There's a new company. <laughs> We sometimes even before we complete our implementation of a technology, the next technology is there and uh, tapping on the doors saying uh, uh, what you're implementing or what you're about to implement is old technology. We have something better. So what 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 it does to us as practitioners of IT is that it it mandates us, pushes us to be lifelong learners. Right? There's no option with that. You need to make sure you continue to upskill yourself and sometimes reskill as well. Say, for example, if you are in a particular uh, area where that technology is getting completely replaced, you need to look at what is that threatening, what is the new entrant who's going to take over that particular area, particular technology that you have worked on. You retool yourself. Always, if you be, if you are in the industry, if you know what's happening, you need to keep an eye open, and at the same time, uh, 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 you are at a better wicket always. Uh, uh, to learn the new skills, new tools. So upskilling was and reskilling. And here again, I'm going to talk about developing a personalized learning plan. It's not a mistake. I wanted to put it in two places because I want to make sure that it is something we all think about. And particularly if you're in university, you probably don't think about it. But as you get into careers, uh, you need to make sure you have your own personal development plan. Some companies have structured plans they want you to have a development plan. Some companies don't. Some organizations don't. Irrespective of whether your organization has that or not, you need to have your own plan. What do you want to do? What are the skills you want to do? So this, again, goes back to being self-aware and uh, 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 the, your commitment to being a lifelong learner. The importance of a mentor. So who is a mentor? A mentor is someone who has a lot of experience, knowledge about the company or a lot of expertise in a particular industry or somebody respected uh, uh, in the industry out there, somebody with experience and somebody who has uh, uh, that uh, ability and the approach to guide and mentor people, guide 
So that's kind of uh, who a mentor is. And why a mentor is needed is a mentor can basically accelerate your learning. You, you can learn about a company or industry very quickly if you have someone that you can have a professional relationship where you have a safe space. And particularly if you are faced with certain challenges in a company or in an organization, if you have a mentor outside of your immediate supervisor, you, you, you have someone that you can always have an open conversation. So it's important to make sure uh, 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 that you have mentors during certain periods of your career. So again, why I mentioned here is some companies, some organizations have formal mentoring relationships. As you all enter organizations, you will see a lot of companies know the value of it and they do provide that framework and they have facilitate they have they facilitate mentorship programs, but some organizations don't. Whether they have a mentorship program or not, I'm very much encouraging you to actively seek mentors within your organization. You always need to look at your supervisor, your people leader as your mentor. That is an expectation, and that is something you have to build that relationship. But outside of that, see who else is needed to guide you to uh, uh, help you learn more about the industry. And generally these mentors are able to put you in touch with people and help you start building a network as well. So with that, I will go into the next, next area, building a network. It is very important we build as well as nurture and maintain uh, good contacts, good relationships, with uh, 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 with industry participants, organizations, uh, as well as uh, 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 I mean peers, colleagues who can help you uh, uh, in your career along the way. So you can use social media platforms. You can join certain industry events and make sure that you build a, a professional network as you progress along your career. So bringing all that back together. So in conclusion, so basically what I need to say is building a successful career is a dynamic journey. It involves continuous cycle of learning, adapting, which leads to growing, which leads to growth. And we all need to embrace the challenges. We have to build leadership qualities. We have to build soft skills that are required and what organizations are looking for. And we need to remain connected to the broader industry landscape, be aware of what's happening in the industry. And one thing I want to say is uh, your career is your own unique narrative. Every career is going to be a different journey, a, a unique narrative. And each experience that you gain along the way, it's going to contribute to the growth of your growth of your career. So with that, I want to wish uh, uh, everyone all the best on your journey and uh, may your IT career be both uh, fulfilling and impactful. Thank you. Thank you, Bajira. So let me share my screen. This is the, uh, it's the Q&A session for, uh, so uh, Tharindu Jayaratna is asking, what would be your kind advice for a person who was in software quality assurance when was in Sri Lanka and presently in Canada working away from IT career path, but really like to get back to the IT profession. Within brackets, last five years was away from IT. Uh, absolutely, there are there are many opportunities. There are many, uh, if you've been away from uh, uh, the industry, you still have opportunities. Maybe you will need to do a small certification, a vendor certification or something that is related, that is relevant 
and that is current. So if you've been away from the industry, I think you need to show your potential employers that you are interested in coming back to the industry by maybe doing something like that, maybe a short course, etc. And then be open at be open for other areas to look at. You may have been in quality assurance earlier, and therefore I am sure you have a good IT background, a foundation. Use that foundation and not only look for quality assurance jobs. There are quality assurance jobs here as well in Canada, but look at other things as well. Use that foundation to build on and look at uh, what you can do. Thank you, Vajira. And Vikum Priya is asking, for someone who is doing a science degree, for example, physical science, chemistry, or mathematics, what additional courses or training would you recommend to get into careers you mentioned? Many of us think we need a computer science degree to get into IT field. Yeah, yeah that, that's why I think I briefly mentioned on this. If you are doing a different uh, 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 subject stream, say chemistry, uh, uh, you absolutely can take another professional qualification that will that will be equivalent or that will be considered as entry qualifications into the industry, like British Computer Science, British Computer Society qualifications or Australian Computer Society qualifications. There are many things that external. I know in Sri Lanka also there are many opportunities. Other private universities are offering certain courses, etc. And it should never stop you because IT is particularly a young field. You can always uh, come into that. As an example, as an, an anecdote, I'll let you know, uh, uh, my current supervisor, who is the CIO of this global pharmaceutical company, was a chemist by training. He's a chemistry graduate from University of Toronto who worked the first about eight to 10 years as a chemist in our company and then moved over to IT and then grew and he's the CIO today. Thank you, Vajira. Uh, if there are uh, no more questions, we can move forward. Okay, let's move forward. I think uh, it's time to deliver the vote of thanks. So to deliver the vote of... Uh, let me share my screen. To deliver... Uh, the... Neranjaka, there is one more question. Okay, okay. So then before we go forward... I think the name is not present, but uh, some of our attendees is asking. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot see your name, uh, but I will forward the question. If someone is, it's it's Jayanta. Jayanta is asking if someone who completed masters with industry experiences without having a basic degree, any possibility to enter into IT industry. So I presume the master's is a, a, a non-IT non related field. Yes, you still have. So I would say based on the industry you are working, like I said, if you are working in a biological kind of bio, or, or chemistry kind of industry, the, the, definitely the companies have IT requirements, your departments, your organizations have requirements. You can look at that. Or you can always look at outside. Related to your training is easier if you if you... If you say if you are a chemist, so there are a lot of applications that are required that are needed uh, that, to run the scientific side of the business for, for a company. So there are opportunities like that. Or if you are completely in a different area, if you uh, uh, if you are not in something related, but still for all, if you want, you always have the opportunity to look at requalifying yourself. And I know it's a uh, uh, it's going to be a little more difficult uh, uh, if you are completely out of it, but you still can get into uh, uh, some, uh, get a professional qualification or you can get vendor certifications on particular technology. So in that situation, if you are advanced in a, in a, in a uh, 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 like say mid career, and if you want to make a change, you've got to look at how you can make that switch also. You probably don't want to go into a very technical area, learn something from scratch, but you can get into something which is less technical, but within IT. Like I said, 
uh, IT, say project management. So that's an area that that's how I moved into IT because I was in the business side as well. I was in a different area of the business and I moved into project management and became more and more technical. So that allowed me to move to uh, uh, IT, but not necessarily doing something very technical like database administration, networking or software development rather than that. So if you're in mid, mid career, you may have to pick one of those career paths, which is more suitable uh, 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 to your skills that you have gained up to that point in your career and uh, based on where you want to go. Thank you, Vajira, for that answer. And thank you, Jayanta, for uh, that question. And Dr. Premadasa, our very own Dr. Premadasa is asking, if Vajira can look back on his journey starting from the Faculty of Science, is there one thing he would do different? What would that be? Hmm. Dr. Premadas, like question. Yeah, like always puts me in trouble, but what do you do? So he's my uh, professor, he's my lecturer. So so uh, uh, thank you, Professor, for everything that you have done over the years, uh, the, for the mentorship you provided me over the years. Thank you very much. So what 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 would I what would I do differently? Uh, well, looking back. From career-wise, I think I made uh, uh, made. It's going to be a tough one because, based on my personal family uh, preferences, I made a decision to uh, 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 migrate to Canada. Uh, at that time, I had a, 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 a choice to make. Uh, I could have stayed with the company I worked. Uh, and move to a different country, or I would have moved to Canada. And I took that choice uh, to move to Canada without staying with the company. So the company I worked for was a very good company, and the company has charted the career path for me over, over a 10-year period. Uh, uh, but still, I made that choice to move away from that company and uh, 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 move to Canada. So that's something probably I would, I would look back because that company, looking back 15 years after leaving that company, uh, uh, I see how good that company was, how how interested that company was in building a career, supporting a career. Uh, uh, so that's probably something I would do differently, uh, doctor. So, uh, so we can easily, we can correctly say that if Vajira is the art, the exceptional last art, uh, one of the artists, one of the exceptional artists is Professor Premadasa, actually. So he's with us and he's smiling and his face explains it all. Uh, and thank you, thank you, Vajira, and thank you, uh, Premadasa, sir. I call him sir because he's my teacher as well. Okay, so we have another one more question from Tarindu Jairatna again. What are the career areas that I can look for to move back to IT with an added effort? So look at look at the uh, growing uh, careers. Look at the growing or high demand areas of today. So I would say uh, 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 areas like robotic process automation will allow you to get us uh, very uh, will allow you to get a smaller training uh, training that requires a, a limited time commitment and money commitment, but will allow you to get a, a, a get a foothold in, in that area. So something like robotic process automation. Uh, uh, and if you, with your background, I think in QA or a foundational IT background, you can get into that. Uh, other areas are like business intelligence. Uh, there's a plethora of systems and applications that are being uh, rolled out and companies are struggling to find people uh, in business intelligence area. The other area is data. If you are interested in becoming more technical, if you are interested in spending a little more time, energy, and effort, uh, uh, anything to do with handling, managing data. There's a lot of demand. And if you are in, you said you are in Canada, and if you are in the area I live in, like Toronto, Toronto is a financial hub. A lot of banks, head offices of banks are here they are always looking for people with data experience. So those are the things I would say. 
Thank you, Vajra, and thank you, Tarindu, for that question as well. Uh, shall we move into... Are there any questions? I think it's time to move into the vote of thanks. Assuming that there are uh, no more questions, let us move into the vote of thanks. So uh, uh, we, we don't have a question, but we do have a comment, uh, a thanking comment. Uh, Tarandu Jayaratna says that, thank you so much uh, for, the, uh, for the answers. Those were asked on behalf of his wife as she is working at the moment. So this is Tarandu Jayaratna who was uh, sending this compliment. Thank you, Tarandu, and thank you, Vajira, again. Uh, so let us move into the vote of thanks. And today's vote of thanks is delivered by Professor Sanjeeva Nishant Pereira. So he's also one of, uh, let me tell uh, a sentence about Professor Pereira. He's uh, one of my professors as well. Uh, at that time, he was a lecturer, senior lecturer. Now he has become not only a professor, he has become the chair and he's currently the head of the department. So over to you, sir. Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, I cannot open the video because uh, he, due to a heavy rain, so I'm facing difficulties in uh, connectivity. So I, I hope like that this is okay. I, uh, Vajira, uh, thank you so much. And even the choosing the, this uh, topic, uh, building the career in information technology, I believe like that all of us are living in the digital era. And we talk about about the machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and even we are talking about the new professional called machine learning engineer, uh, artificial engineer, engineer, artificial engineer, engineer, and also data data science, data analytics, right? So all these things actually involved in IT, right? So even the choosing that is building the career in information technology, I I think like that is a timely timely, important, valuable title. And also uh, you have of course explained about the different type of career path involved in the IT sector and especially in like that the first sectional areas. And also you talk about, about the how to enter into the IT path and the IT professionals. And then you exp explain about that the, your personal experiences, talking about like that the, some of the factors, important factors and how you build up the career in IT and how, how, how you actually think about, about the various aspects. So thank you very much. And on behalf of the Faculty of Science, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to uh, Vajira to you and then choosing uh, this timely important uh, title and also like that the delivering the it in a manner like that everybody can understand also everybody can get the, some um, get the very important ideas thank you so much and not only that uh, i would like to extend the, my sincere gratitude to kapsa and the executive committee of the kapsa and not only for, of course, organizing the, this talk series, even like that, the many, many occasions uh, you have extended your fullest support to uh, Faculty of Science. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Pereira. Uh, so let us uh, conclude uh, today's talk. And let uh, I would like to remind that the CAFSA Dis Distinguished Speaker Series is organized by the Speaker Series Subcommittee of CAFSA uh, North America. 
in association with the Faculty of Science, University of Colombo. If you would like to contact the subcommittee, please write to us at speaker series at kavsa.org. We are particularly interested in hearing from you with topics and speaker suggestions. I would again like to thank you, everyone, for this fruitful uh, evening in Sri Lanka and morning in North America. Uh, thank you again. Have a thank good you. day. And I, we would like to wish everyone a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to head on to